I V M. Opening an account is such a headache, and in most cases, filling out long forms, slow responses from the bank, and the sheer amount of documents I need to put together. I am someone who likes things simplified, and that is why I am looking forward to using the Jupiter Money app. It's a digital banking app that simplifies banking. Take opening an account, for example. It's completely paperless, and in fact, your PAN card and Aadhaar card are the only things that you need. The whole process takes only two, three minutes, and it's super easy to understand. You can check out Jupiter dot Money to know more, or download the Jupiter app on Android and iOS to get started. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we are going to be talking about leadership. I think leadership is a very, very important skill and a mindset that we all need to learn as we start progressing. Because leadership is not something that just exists in the workplace; it exists in the way that we carry ourselves in our life as well. So today with us we have Avantika Sinha, who's going to be talking to us and understanding or helping us understand this whole concept of what leadership is. What is the mindset that is needed in leadership? So Avantika, welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. Thank you very much. Avantika, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been a coach, a leadership coach for the last 12 years. Before that, I used to head HR for an organization called the Akanksha Foundation, help set up their systems and processes. Before that, I started my career as a lawyer. So, you know, that's me professionally very shortly. You know, what what I've been doing is working with leaders and helping them change their mindsets, develop new behaviors and beliefs in order to be more effective as leaders. So that's what I've been doing mostly with corporates, um some with uh, NGOs as well, some with individuals. So that's me. How did you decide to get into this field of of leadership? It's uh, yeah because you know I I did I I'm a lawyer by education and I practiced law for a while but I decided that what really excited me was working directly with people and so that's why I jumped into the non-profit and because I was doing hr over there um i part of that was training etc and i really got interested in that and then i did my coaching certification and then i got into this and i started the firm that i work with which is still water with a couple of other partners and uh, that was in 2011 so that's how <laughs> wow fantastic do you think everybody has the ability to become a leader yes absolutely yeah i strongly believe that So what is a leader like how would you define a leader for people who are listening right now like how would you categorize a leader To me you know leader it's not about a position it's not about the authority it's about showing up in a way that inspires people such that they choose to follow you you know like if you think about Gandhi it's not like he was people's bosses it's because he had a vision that inspired other people and inspired trust and credibility in them in the way he showed up and that's why they left their jobs to follow him so um that's what leadership was for me so it could be you know you could be a starting like a 16 year old and be a leader you can be a 50 year old and a leader so it's not about age it's not about position it's about how you're showing up and is this something that is learned is it something that is picked up is it something that you have to be taught like you said that even if you're 16 you can be a leader is, is there a natural leader is there, how does that come yeah i think you know uh, various mindsets and skills that go into making a leader and some of them could come naturally to you some of them you may have grown up watching your parents or your teachers and invite them um and i think every leader has some blind spots every leader has some um things where they're not being effective so you learn that and it's absolutely learnable lovely you know in fact i was just talking to a company where they were saying that many times we promote people right you're an executive for the longest time and then you're put in a managerial role now there's a big difference between a manager and a leader right yeah. what is that mindset shift that needs to take place from being given the designation of a manager to becoming a leader i think the managing they're just different skills So managing is really are you getting the work done are you producing the results are you managing the team whereas leadership is about inspiring it's about um having a vision it's about showing the direction it's about um you know being the role model so there are different skills and again you can be a leader and manager both together you can be a leader and manager separately you know um they just different oh, so there's no overlap it doesn't have to be that if you're a leader you're a manager as well Not necessarily, no. 
like Fantastic. a cat, you know, you can be a student and be a leader. You can be a housewife and be a leader. So for me, it's um, it's not about the position. So let's jump into this mindset of a leader. I, I love the way that, you know, you said that mindset is so critical here. What is the mindset of a leader? Well, I think that's a very broad question, but okay. the five mindsets that we think that I think that makes a leader really effective are this clarity, knowing mm-hmm. what you want, this honesty, which is not being honest to other people, but also being honest to yourself in how you're looking at the situation. Mm-hmm. There's ownership in that you're looking at the choices that are within your control rather than blaming other people or you're blaming the situation or even blaming yourself. There's win-win, which is, you know, how do I work with people? How do I create the situations or solutions that work for both the parties and not just thinking about me, not being a martyr, not being dominating, but really getting what we both want. And then there's commitment, which is doing whatever is required to produce the results. So I think those five mindsets, when I work with people and they imbibe that, that really takes their effectiveness to the next level. And to me, that really encapsulates everything you know whether it's decision making whether it's growth mindset whether it's you know just sharing feedback developing a team it's, it sort of encapsulates everything can we deep dive into each of these can we go one at a time and, and deep dive into each of, so what is the first one the first one is clarity clarity. So clarity is really defining what do i want and there are four elements so there's what do i want which is obvious but why do I want it? You know, and, and a lot, lot of people I feel don't go deeper into why is it important to me? Why do I really want it? Then by when? What is the timeline? And finally, the prices. And that's something that people really miss out on that. You know, what is the price I'm willing to pay in order to get this? Right. So there are no free lunches. Even if I go buy a shampoo in the shop, I need to pay some price. Right. So if I want to, let's say, become the director of a company. And what are the prices I'm willing to pay? Right? Am I willing to work longer hours? Am I willing to be honest and direct in my feedback? Am I willing to uh, let go of certain things? Am I willing to fail? Right? So all of those things, am I, what are the prices I'm willing to pay? And what are the prices I'm not willing to pay? So one of the things for me, uh, when I started out, I have two kids, two boys. And I said, you know, I want to be a leadership coach and a trainer. And that involves traveling all over the place, all over India, outside of India. And I said, hey, you know what? I don't want to be traveling more than three days in a week. And so that means that I'm willing to pay the price of not becoming a leadership coach and a trainer as fast as some other people could. That means that I give up on some income that I might make if I was was willing to travel more. But that's what I said. I was willing to pay the price of traveling and being away from the kids three days in a week but not willing to do more than that. So when I was clear, then that makes a clarity. It's a complete clarity. Then I know, okay, this is what I'm willing to do. This is what I'm not willing to do. And it helps me make decisions. It helps me say, you know what? Yeah, that's what I can do. That's what I'm willing to do. That's what I'm not willing to do. And so it helps me say no to clients when they're asking for dates. It helps me, you know, say uh, yes when I want to, right? So it really gives me a whole lot of clarity for the life that I want to create. And you're so right, because as soon as you have clarity, the decision making becomes so much easier. Yeah. It is not that you're struggling and then you have to spend time thinking whether this is right, this is wrong, I need to do this or not. When there's clarity, it is almost like a fatak decision. It's like instantaneously, I can do yeah. this, I can't. Right. You know, a lot of people message saying that the first question you ask, which is what do I want? Yeah. Many people struggle there and stop there, right? Unless you ask what I want, you can't get to why or when, etc. Yeah. How do you help people get to that? Or do you feel that the clients that come to you already have this very clearly? You know, it's really surprising that people don't feel they know the answer to that question. What do I want? And I think that it's a lot to do with fears that hold us back rather than actually not knowing. Because if I don't know what I want, then who does, right? And the couple of, you know, one of the fears is what if I declare something that this is what I want, and I fail, right? I don't want to do that because if I fail, what does that mean about me? Does that mean I'm a failure? Does that mean I'm not good enough? And so that fear holds them back from even declaring that this is what I want. Uh, But I think a lot of people actually know that in their hearts, this is what I want, you know, this is what I want to do. And even if 
you know, you're not clear at this point of time that, okay, this is, you know, my life path. This is what the career that I want to choose. You declare it. Clarity is a declaration. Mm. It's not something that dawns on us. It's something that we declare. We say, this is what I want. And then I do that. And I do that. And I see, you know, does that work for me? Does that work, not work for me? If it doesn't, you know, am I going to continue doing that? Am I going to do something different? And I keep creating that clarity through making declarations. but. I hold back on making that declaration because I'm afraid I'll fail. And then people will think I'm not good enough or I will feel that I'm a failure. And I don't want to do that. That's a deep fear that people have. I don't want to be seen as a failure. I don't want myself to feel like a failure. And so I'd rather not declare. And I say, I don't know. You know, this is so interesting because I like the way that you said it's a declaration. And this is something that I've made a practice of as well. As soon as I decide to do something, I tell everybody about it. Right. And in that process, people start to come up and help you. Right. So when I started writing my book, I said, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. So as a result, people said, oh, why don't you talk to my publisher? Why don't you talk to this? Which would never have happened if I had never declared it. I was too scared of saying, what if my book doesn't turn out well? Just like you said, that fear of failure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Declaring it and then getting that clarity, extremely important. And then why you're doing this, right? If you're doing it for reasons that are very superficial, then there's no point doing that what? Do you find it difficult that people get to that why? Is there clarity in that why? I think when you dig deeper, there is. Mm -hmm. But again, people are not really thinking about it. So I might say, you know, this is what I want. And a lot of times, is it because that's what the society expects of you? Is it because your parents have told you to do this? Is it because you feel, you know, you're seeing your peers do similar things? That's why you want to do it. But why is it really important to you? And those reasons are fine. But be clear that this is why it's important to you. And I feel like, you know, when you keep digging deeper and just say, you know, why, 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 you can find that answer within yourself. So definitely digging is required. Self-reflection is required, but it's there. The answer is there. Excellent. And then the setting of when is critical because if you don't have a timeline, then it's just going to expand for the rest of your life. And like you said, the last part, which is what am I willing to pay for this? So, so critical. We're going to take a quick break. See you on the other side. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Storytellers and Storytellers, Vineet speaks with drum prodigy Darshan Doshi about helping young Indian drummers take to the world stage. The Simplified Gang delves into the unfortunate financial crisis in Sri Lanka. On Smarter with Sid, Siddharth observes how Lata Mangeshwar was snubbed, snubbed I tell you, out of memoriam mentions in both the Grammys and the Oscars. This is an absolute disgrace. And on The Life Manifesto, Zarina explains how to beat procrastination and show up for yourself. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you enjoyed this show or any of our other shows for that matter, do please tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. You can check us out on YouTube as well. On ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, we have a list of all of our YouTube channels. Do check out if your favorite show is available as full video. We are also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and advertising on the network. We'd really, 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 really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it out. It helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors for this week, SBI Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and Jupiter, a digital banking app. Thank you so much for making this possible. Welcome back. All right, let's jump into the conversation. So when you have this clarity, what is the difference that you see in your clients when they come without this clarity and then with this clarity? Do you see as, do you see them as a, almost a different person? Huge difference, huge difference. Because when they don't have the clarity, that's the first step. And so then otherwise what's happening is that they're either feeling confused, you know, they're either or they're blaming other people and saying, you know, they're not providing the clarity. My boss is not giving me this, etc. Or they're saying, you know what, I don't know, so I must be really stupid, right? And so they, all those beliefs are holding them back. And they just, it takes away their confidence, mm. right? And so then they'll say, oh, you know what, I should do this, or I have to do this, but they're actually not doing it. So for example, you know, if I were to say, you know, I want to get fit, I want to exercise, right? If I say, you know, I want to exercise, so I should go to the gym today, right? I'm not likely to go to the gym. Because if I was actually going to the gym, I, I'm going to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to the gym, right? And so that even in the language, in the way they're speaking, in the way they're communicating, you can see that difference when they are clear versus when they're 
not absolutely clear, you know? I have to produce that report. I have to work late hours because of my boss, right? Versus I'm going to work till this time and I'm going to have a conversation with my boss to say I'm going to leave by 7 p.m. every day and this is what I'm going to do. That's very different. There's a very different level of clarity when you speak like that. But that, you know, so it shows in the communication, it shows up in your confidence, it shows up in the way you are relating to other people and the way you're relating to yourself. It's just a very, very different, different person. Yeah. And it's actually so easy to work with someone with that clarity, right? Yeah. Instead of people harboring feelings and not communicating it or not knowing where they stand on these kinds of issues. So that yeah. clarity adds that almost ease of working with each other as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, again, like I said, it's the first step. So mm. if you're not clear, then it affects everything else. Correct. But it's when you get the clarity, yeah, when you get the clarity, then it's, like you said, it's the bedrock. And then you can build on that. That's the foundation. Fantastic. So first, guys, get clarity on what it is that you are doing. Right? What it is, why are you doing it? When are you going to achieve it by? And finally, what are you willing to pay for it? Clarity. What would your next step be? So the next one is honesty, which is the next mindset. Now, honesty in the way I'm defining is not about telling the truth, but really about looking at the situation as it is. So how am I responding to a result that I've produced or the feedback that I've got or even my own emotions or thoughts? Am I being honest about them? Am I looking at them as they are or am I overreacting or underreacting to it? And the reason that that is important is one, because it helps me make decisions that are effective, right? So if I, look, I can look at a situation and say, you know what, I said I will produce 5x, but I've produced 3x. That's just honesty, right? Without beating myself up, without saying, oh, yeah, it's okay, it doesn't matter, without saying, you know, it was them, etc. It's just I'm looking at the situation and now I can figure out what I want to do. But if I don't even look at the situation honestly, then it doesn't, it gets in the way of decision making. And two, it also gets in the way of communicating with other people. So when I'm honest, and I'm communicating from a place of honesty in the way I'm looking at things. The way I'm communicating again is also um, is impacted. And then people resonate with me. People can, you know, I can inspire people. I can motivate them when I'm coming from a place of honesty. So that's the second mindset. It's so interesting, right? Because like you said, I didn't produce 5X. And then you don't make an excuse about it or you don't blame somebody else about it, or you don't beat yourself up about it. It is just what it is. And, and looking at that from that perspective of truth or honesty is, is what creates this. Yeah. Is this a difficult one to get at? It sounds like it's terribly hard to get at this, right? Remove all the layers and look at something honestly. I think, again, you know, what gets in the way is the fear, the fear of judgment. That if I look at something as it is, neutrally, objectively, then either I get judged or I feel overwhelmed. So for Mm. example, if, you know, I find that something's not working in my marriage, you know, since I've had kids, relationship with my husband has become very practical. We're talking about daily stuff, where to take kids and how to, you know, uh, when is the school event, et cetera. It's all about that. There's no romance. And when I look at it, honestly, my fear is that, oh my God, you know, am I in a bad marriage? Am I with the wrong person? Am I doing something wrong? Do we, are we going to get divorced? Like what, what are people going to say? Right? All of those fears spiral uh, out of control. And so that's the fear. That's, that's the fear that keeps me from looking at honestly. But, you know, if I look at it honestly, it doesn't mean any of that. It just means, hey, you know, okay, romance is missing. What am I going to do? Okay, you know, let me set up a date. You know, every week I'm going to go for a date. I'm going to, you know, uh, I don't know, do things to get romance back. But that's only possible if I look at it honestly. Hmm. And it does mean that you need to get past that fear of overreaction, saying, that, hey, you know what, what does that mean when I look at it? And if I'm feeling sad, does that mean that I'm getting depressed? Does that mean my life is not fine? Does that mean that I need to see a therapist? Does that mean that, you know, what does that mean about my life, right? Oh, no, let me look at that because every emotion will give you a message. Right? If I look at it honestly, then I can act on that message. But if I don't look at it, that's when I, you know, either overreact and I get really, I either blow up or give in. That's when that happens. But honesty is just looking at things neutrally. Distilling it down to that truth. Like what is the essence of why this is taking place? And that's it. And then you can sort it out and try and figure out what to do about it instead of, like you said, blowing it out of proportion, increasing it to something that it is. Yeah, just neutral, neutral look. Fantastic. You know, over both these two 
mindset shifts, fear was something that was coming up a lot, right? In yeah. Fear of failure, fear of being judged. Yeah. Do you notice a change in the way people deal with fear as they become more experienced leaders? Does fear increase because they have more at stake now? Like, how does that fear profile go? I think fear is always there. Hmm. I don't think the fear goes away. And it's there at every stage, whether you're a management trainee or you're the CEO, those fears are always there, right? The stakes might be higher, um, but it doesn't feel that way to, you know, whether you're a CEO of a business and you're going to lose like millions of dollars or whether you're a management trainee and you're afraid that, you you know, you're going to lose your job, it feels the same. But what leaders do is that they don't let it stop them, Hmm. right? They'll, They'll feel the fear, but they'll do it anyway. And, um, that's, I think that's the shift. That's the mindset shift that, yeah, I feel the fear. That doesn't mean that, you know, my survival is at stake. And you know, the, the reason for fear, the evolutionary reason for fear, you know, was great because it helped us uh, stay alive, right? When millions of years ago, right? Uh, so if you we were afraid of an animal, that means, okay, we need to run, fight, fly, freeze, et cetera. Those responses, those, you know, so fear is really important, but it still shows up because it's in our DNA. Right. And so yeah. even today, like if, I, if I'm in a meeting and I give an idea, you know, I express my idea and somebody says, oh, that's a stupid idea. I suddenly, you know, my fears get activated and you know, fear of not being liked, fear of not being respected. It's almost as if my survival is at stake. Right. And so but the programming that we need to learn is to say, okay, what the fears are not going to go away. Let me focus on what I want to create. And that's, you know, that's when clarity comes in. That, that's why it's the first step. Because when I'm focused on what I want to create, the fears are there, but I'm not focusing on the fears. I'm focusing on the creation, the, you know, what I'm going to do. And so that's, I think that's how you sort of um, not get rid of them, but get over them, if that makes sense. It's about um, changing the spotlight, you know, like if you're so worried about how people are going to think of you, what, what is the impression that you're going to create, then like I know so many people who have imposter syndrome when they reach a particular stage, like do I really deserve to be in this room with all these managing directors here? Like, am, am I supposed to be here? And that imposter syndrome s- suddenly sets in because now they have stopped focusing on what they were supposed to do and instead now they're looking at everybody else and what do yeah. they think of me, right? I think that that's what you're saying get your spotlight or focus back on what it is that you're here for. Yeah. And then that imposter syndrome and fear starts disappearing. Yeah. You know, again, it, it doesn't, but it, you still, it doesn't immobilize you. It mm. doesn't paralyze you. You know, you can still keep moving even though the fear is there because as leaders, you all, you're always going to be judged. That's not going to go away. Right. But um, you either say, okay, you know what? I don't want to be judged. So I play small or I say, you know what? I want to be a leader that comes with judgment. And so let me be the leader and instead of worrying about what people are saying. Yeah. And sometimes you just make the judgment fun and you laugh at it and like, oh, they actually thought that. Ha ha ha. It's like, it's, it's funny. Okay. It's funny actually, you know, because la- laughter is a great way to get over some of the fears, right? Because we take it so seriously because we're afraid that, you know, again, our survival is at stake, even though we, we're not thinking it consciously. Uh, laughter can be a great way out of it. So that's actually a great point. Yeah, it's, you know, because sometimes you, you wonder, like, did that person really think that? How? Right? Mm-hmm. And then you say, okay, must be something in their life as well that is that's putting this judgment on. So exactly. letting yeah. it go at that. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so then we have honesty as the second mindset, which is be very, very honest in what you're doing. Distill it down to what it is that you actually need to work on without all the fluff around it, without all the judgment around it, and then move from there. Which is, just, you know, looking at the situation, the result my own experience, emotions, thoughts, the feedback I'm getting, all of that, just neutral, neutrally, just look at it neutrally. No overreaction, no underreaction. Correct. Absolutely. What is this third stage? So that's ownership. Mm-hmm. And that's my favorite one. Um, <laughs> ownership is really saying that if it's to be, it's up to me. You know, it's uh, if I always have a choice. I can look at the choices of you know, the actions that I have, or even the way I'm looking at things, the narrative I have of this story, it's a blameless focus on my choices of actions and, you know, story, the lens that I'm looking at it. It's not blaming other people. It's not blaming the situation. It's not even blaming myself, right? And I think that I used to think that ownership is about blaming myself because I used to think, okay, you know what, if I don't blame myself, 
then how am I going to learn, right? I've got to like be hard with myself to really understand what I need to do. And two, that if I don't blame, you know, if I blame myself, then the other people don't need to blame me. Then they'll be like, oh, TK, okay, it's, she's understood her mistake. So we, we can be soft on her, et cetera. But ownership is It's almost about, a cop out blaming yourself, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm blaming myself, so you don't be hard on me, right? But it's not, it's like, bl- ownership is not about blame at all. Uh, ownership is also not about doing everything myself, because a lot of people that I work with, especially younger managers, they tend to do that. They're like, okay, you know what, we need to get work done. And if we delegate to other people, then I don't know how things are going to work. We might make mistakes, we might fail. And so let me just do it myself. I'm taking ownership. And that may not be um, the most effective thing to do. So. It's really just saying that something happened in the past and you know, now that I'm older, wiser, more mature, I can see options that I didn't see before. Yeah. And if I'm in a similar situation, this is what I'll do differently. This is what I learned from it. How do you create ownership in somebody who doesn't have it? You know, like when you're, when you're working with somebody and you notice that this is something that is maybe lacking in them. How do you even go about having this conversation and getting to it? Because... Going past the blame itself is going to be a, a mammoth task, right? Yeah, you know, again, the fear comes in because why are people not taking ownership is because I'm afraid that I'll be judged again, you know? And the thing about the judgment is that people are not so afraid of the other people's judgments. It's about how they're judging themselves, right? So if I think that, you know, um, I made a mistake, then that means I'm not good enough. Then if you point out to me that, hey, Amantika, you know, you made a mistake, I'm going to hear you saying as, she, he's saying, I'm not good enough. But if I think, if my belief is that yeah, everybody makes mistakes, I can learn from it, right? And then you say, hey, you made a mistake. I'll be like, hey, oh, sorry, you know, I think let me come back to you, let me correct it, etc. So it's really about how I'm judging myself and what is the belief I have under the pressure of which I start telling the helpless version, you know, the helpless stories in my life and start blaming other people, start blaming myself and say, you know what, it was their fault or I'm not good enough. All right, so that was Avantika Sina and we were discussing about leadership. Now, make sure to join us for the next episode because we deep dive into the remaining mindsets that exist. Now, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am at Ashton Doc on Twitter and Instagram. We have a brand new habit coaching online course, quizzes, videos, and a lot more on the website awesome180.com. So check it out now. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey where you can fill out the survey. Safar, raste, manzil, or mukam. Aksar ye humse kuch kehna chahte. Par hum hai ki apni rozmarra ki zindagi mein इन्हें सुनने से कतराते हैं नमस्ते दोस्तों मेरा नाम है केशव चतुर्वेदी और मैं आपको ले चलूंगा कुछ ऐसे सफर पर जहां आपको एक नया नजरिया मिलेगा सफर और मंजिलों को देखने का आइए इन किस्से कहानियों में डूब जाएं हर मंगलवार और शुक्रवार